Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an action, adventure, fantasy film from 2020, titled Monster Hunter. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It is said that there are new worlds out there, hidden from the perception of our senses. In this particular new world, humans coexist with a wide variety of large and savage monsters. There's also a mystical tower in the middle of the desert that is always surrounded by black clouds and lightning, and that's where a sand ship led by the Admiral is currently sailing to. Their trip is suddenly interrupted however, when they're attacked by a monster that lives in the dunes called Diablos. It tries to knock over the ship by pushing it with its giant body, so the Admiral rushes to the wheel and tries to steer the vessel out of the monster's way. The escape is successful, but sadly, when trying to rescue Handler from falling off the ship, the hunter falls instead and is left behind in the desert. On Earth, Captain Natalie Artemis and her security team formed by Lincoln, Marshall, Dash, Steeler, and Axe, are searching for a missing team of soldiers in the desert. The only clues they have are a recording of their SOS message and the wheel tracks on the road that suddenly come to a stop, as if the vehicle that left them had disappeared in thin air. There are also some mysterious rock markers near the road with symbols they cannot read. Suddenly, a dark storm appears in front of them moving at a frantic speed. The team gets on their vehicles in order to escape as the storm hits all the mysterious markers with lightning, making the writing on them glow up. No matter how fast the team drives though, the storm is faster and soon reaches their cars, engulfing them inside a portal as the vehicles fall off the edge of a cannon. The cars are pushed by the wind, they roll and turn over and over, throwing the people inside off their seats. When they finally land and the soldiers come out, they notice the storm has backed off and is floating above a mountain area with various structures that aren't on their maps. This desert they find themselves in is full of sand dunes as well, which should be impossible because the nearest dunes should be 20 clicks away. All their electronics are fried, and not even their compass is working, so they decide to try to return back to base by navigating using the sun. Axe tells them to wait, however, when he finds something, it's the cars used by the lost team. There are bodies next to them, burned to such an extreme that couldn't be accomplished by a flamethrower. There are other things around, glass shards, which indicate something exceedingly hot having melted the sand, and empty bullets, which means the dead soldiers defended themselves from something. Yet whatever it was, it hasn't left marks on the sand. Getting worried about whatever it is that caused this, the team gets back on their cars and leaves the area, unaware that Hunter is watching them through his spyglass. But they stop again when they find one more mind-blowing thing, a giant animal skeleton, bigger even than a dinosaur. Taking advantage of their stop, Hunter shoots an arrow at them, and the soldiers respond by opening fire until Artemis grabs the arrow and asks them to stop, it only has chalk on it a warning signal. At that moment, Diablo surges from the sand and begins chasing the squad as they try to escape on their cars. No matter what they shoot at it, it is impervious to all of it, and eventually it comes close enough to hit one of the cars and knock it over a couple of times, killing Axe. Steeler manages to run away before the car gets crushed and jumps on the jeep with the others, but they don't manage to get too far before Diablos knocks over this car as well and impales Steeler with his tusk. Right before dying, he throws a couple of grenades at the monster, which don't hurt him but offer an opening for his team to hide among the rocky formations. As Hunter shoots a smoke arrow at Diablos to slow it down, the squad enters a cave with an entrance too small for the monster to follow them, so it gives up for now and leaves. Dash starts to panic about their situation, but Artemis, as a leader, gives out orders and tells them they'll be good soldiers and survive as such. Her words are interrupted however, when she's suddenly taken by a spider-like monster called Nerskyla which stings her and injects her some paralyzing venom before dropping her and running away when the soldiers start shooting at it. Marshall and Lincoln try to give Artemis CPR to no avail, and Dash begs them to get going, because more Nursillas are coming out now that night has fallen. Assuming Artemis is dead, Lincoln, Marshall, and Dash leave the cave as they continue to fire at the monster with the help of Hunter, who is shooting explosive arrows from atop a cliff and must run away when a Nurskala comes after him. Dash trips and falls, delaying her group's escape, this gives one of the monsters the opportunity to attack from above and capture Marshall. While Hunter hides in his secret cave lair, Artemis wakes up, feeling rather dizzy. She can hear her teammates' screams coming from outside, but she soon is knocked out again when a Nurskyla finds her. The next time she wakes up, Artemis is inside a cocoon in the Nursilla's nest, which luckily is thin enough for her to tear off with her bare hands. Once free, she notices she is surrounded by bones and more cocoons holding the bodies of Dash and Marshall. Fighting off the dizziness and the pain, Artemis picks up her teammate's fallen pouch and retrieves two flares, an oxygen can, and a bunch of bullets. Using one of the flares as both defense and light, she walks down some kind of hallway made of spider web and is suddenly startled by Lincoln, who can't feel his arm and is suffering from chest pain. Unaware that the monsters are following them, Artemis helps Lincoln walk towards an exit when her flare goes off. In the time it takes her to turn on the other one, a Nerskyla appears in front of them, which Artemis keeps at bay with her new flare. 
Things get complicated though, when Lincoln feels more pain on his body and tears off his shirt only to find out there are hatching eggs on his wound. The nurse Gala grabs him and takes him away, and when it tries to do the same with Artemis, she lights it on fire by combining the flare with the oxygen can, causing the whole nest to burn. Artemis starts climbing towards the exit and she almost makes it when a nurse Gala grabs her leg and drags her back in, so she frees herself by throwing the bullets she salvaged into the fire, making them explode. When she finally comes out of the cave, it's morning, and the sunlight prevents the Nursillas from following her. After having a freak out about the crawling sensations on her body, she cuts open a bullet she finds on the ground and pours the gunpowder on the wound on her ankle, then she hits two rocks together to create a spark and ignite the powder, effectively cauterizing the wound. Afterward, she goes up the hill to get a better understanding of the area, but she only sees desert all around her and the storm that brought her here far on the horizon. That could be her key to returning home, but there's something she needs to test first, she throws a rock and throws it in the sand, causing Diablos to come out with a furious roar and leave quickly when he doesn't see her. Artemis continues her exploration of the rocky area while Hunter follows her from afar and finds a shipwreck, which for a second makes her think she may find water, but the keg only has sand in them. When she enters the remains of the ship, she is jumped on and grabbed by Hunter from behind, but she reacts quickly and begins a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Both of them are incredibly skillful fighters that keep each other on their toes, but while Artemis manages to stab Hunter on his shoulder with his own knife, he still manages to overpower her and win the fight. After tying up her hands, he takes Artemis to his cave lair, trying to make her walk faster before night falls and the spiders come out again. Artemis falls to the ground and picks up a glass shard without him noticing before she's picked up again and taken away. At the cave, Hunter drinks some water from a special contraption he made and eats moss from the rocks, but he doesn't share anything with Artemis, and when she tries to talk, he makes her stay silent because the Nursillas are outside, trying to dig their way in. Afterward, Hunter makes a special salve for the stab wound on his chest and prays to two little figurines he carries with him, unaware that Artemis is only pretending to be asleep and is actually working on cutting the ropes on her wrists with the glass shard. The next morning, Hunter goes out to check on the storm and the monsters, and when he returns, he doesn't find Artemis where he left her, falling for her ambush. After hitting him and tying him up, she tries to drink from his water, but he kicks off the contraption so she can't have it. They cannot communicate because they speak different languages, so Artemis responds by destroying his little altar, which makes him furious. Hunter jumps on her and they begin to fight again, and all the moving around and rolling takes them out of the cave. Since they can't control the rolling, Hunter falls into a hole that takes him to the Nursillas' nest, but Artemis catches him just in time and drags him back up before cutting the ropes that tie him off. Trying to show she isn't his enemy, she offers him some chocolate as a peace offering, which he tries and loves the taste of. In return, he lends her his water skin, which she drinks from before following him to the edge of the hill area. There, they manage to communicate a little, they both want to go back into the storm, but Diablos is in the way. Artemis thinks they should go back to her military cars and retrieve their weapons, but Hunter disagrees, guns are useless against monsters. Instead, he takes her to the entrance of the Nursilla's nest to explain his idea, if they can kill a spider and take its poison, they can use it to defeat Diablos. Artemis agrees, calling it using a monster to kill another monster, and reluctantly accepts to be bait. As the sun goes down, she moves to stand in the middle of the rocky area and sings an army song to attract a nurse Gala's attention. The plan works, and when a spider shows up, Artemis runs in the direction of the trap they had set up. The nurse Gala steps on a rope that captures her, and Hunter uses the chance to jump from above with her giant sword and cut its head in half. They also cut off its stinger, which they take back to the lair before more Nursillas come after them. At the cave, after sharing a little silly moment, Hunter explains to her that the figurines represent his family, who are now dead. The next day, they start getting their plan ready. The insides of the nurse Gala stinger are wrapped around an arrow, they build a trap at the shipwreck, and Artemis is given armor and weapons to train with. One is similar to a grappling hook, the other one is a set of dual blades that can be lighted on fire when pressed together. When the time comes to execute the plan, it goes quite well at first. They release a makeshift catapult that sends a keg flying and it lands in the middle of a dune, causing Diablos to come out at a safe distance from them. Artemis and Hunter start running towards her army vehicles with Diablos chasing after them, but they are forced to stop when the monster hides under the sand. Hunter decides to act as bait while Artemis goes to retrieve her weapons, but during his run, he accidentally drops the pouch with his family figurines. When he comes back to pick it up, Diablos take the chance to come out and knock him off. Hunter wastes no time and shoots the venomous arrow right into its eye, this enrages Diablos and makes it go faster after him, but Artemis distracts it by shooting the car's machine gun. Diablos is starting to feel dizzy because of the venom, but bullets are still not enough to hurt it, so it comes closer and knocks over the car after Artemis hides in it. The monster continues to follow her when she gets out, and Hunter takes advantage of this distraction to jump on its head and impale his sword in the middle of it. Sadly, it doesn't go deep enough, 
so Diablo shakes him off his body and sends him flying until he hits the other car. There's still a chance to finish it though, so Artemis shoots her hook at Diablo's head so when it moves, it raises her with it, helping her land on top of it. She pushes the sword and finishes what Hunter started, effectively killing Diablos at last. Since Hunter is still unconscious, Artemis picks up as many supplies as she can find from the cars and cuts off a piece of the monster's hard skin to make a makeshift stretcher and drag Hunter across the desert with her. After many hours, the wind starts picking up and gets them in danger, so Artemis puts up a tent around them and uses the emergency army kit to keep his heart beating. The sandstorm eventually goes away, leaving them buried in sand, but thanks to the tent, they both survive and easily get out of the resulting dune. After another long walk, Artemis and Hunter make it to an oasis, so they decide to stop to take a break. The area is populated with tortoise-like creatures called Apsuros, which Hunter explains are herbivores, so they don't need to fear them. When Artemis comes closer to the water to drink, another monster called Cephalus comes out of it to attack her, but Hunter kills it with a swift swing of his sword to later roast it over a fire. Night falls after the pair have had their dinner, and they are startled by a sudden fire burning the oasis. There's another monster attacking, one bigger than all the ones they've seen so far, Rathalos, a fire-breathing wyvern. A group of scared Absuros comes in a stampede, trying to escape from Rathalos, and Hunter manages to sneak away, but Artemis falls to the ground in the middle of them. She thinks she's going to be crushed when suddenly, a figure appears in front of her, it's the Admiral, swinging a sword on fire to keep the Absuros from coming closer. Artemis stands up and activates the fire on her dual blades to follow his example while Hunter makes it to the edge of a cliff. He also almost gets run over if it wasn't for Handler, who appears hanging from a rope to pick him up and take him away from the edge. When all the Apsuros are gone, Artemis thanks the Admiral for his help, and he surprises her by speaking English right before knocking her out with a punch. She wakes up moments later inside a cage in a ship while the Admiral's crew watches her. They're sent away by Hunter, who obviously feels guilty about her confinement, but there's nothing he can do about it. After he's gone too, Artemis notices there's a hatch on the floor of her cage, so she uses the bench to destroy the lock, open the door and sneak into the kitchen. When she tries to steal a knife, she's startled by the Admiral's cat-like companion and official chef, the Palico, who doesn't let her take anything. It is then that Hunter arrives with good news, Artemis is free now. He takes her to see the Admiral, who apologizes to her for the misunderstanding and removes her shackles before explaining why he did so in the first place. The Admiral is afraid of her world and what it could do to this one. Artemis isn't the first one that has crossed over, and it was from previous visitors that he picked up her language. The thing responsible for all this is the Sky Tower, which lies at the peak of the mountain surrounded by the storm. It's a remnant of an ancient civilization, pretty advanced and dangerous. These ancients knew how to travel between worlds, but they're extinct now because technology turned on them, and the Admiral suspects Earth may have something to do with it. They're on their way to investigate the tower, but Rathalos is a dangerous obstacle. The Admiral proposes that if Artemis helps them defeat them, they'll help her get home in return, so of course Artemis accepts. The crew leaves for the mountain at dawn, and they make it to the tower after a long, arduous climb. The sky tower is standing on lava, and they think that's what powers it, allowing it to control the storm and create a gateway to her world which looks rather unstable. As soon as they take some steps towards the tower, they find glass shards on the ground, meaning Rathalos is close. After the admiral reminds them the wyvern is weak right before it breathes fire, the team splits and gets ready to fight. Rathalos burns some of the members of the crew before landing between them and the tower. The admiral is the first one to go after it, with Artemis and Hunter following him closely, all of them having their weapons on fire to be able to do any damage. Other crew members try to help as well but Rathalos pushes them away while the tower starts lighting all the special markers around it, matching the ones Artemis had seen in her world. While they do manage to land a couple of hits, their damage isn't enough to take down the creature. Rathalos chases Artemis with fire until she's forced to jump off the cliff, only to fall into a portal and land back in her world. An army rescue group appears to help her, claiming they've been looking for her unit for a while. After putting her on a stretcher and taking her to their plane, they take off, but they don't manage to go too far. The storm appears above them again and Rathalos comes flying into this world. The monster destroys the plane and makes it crash before going after the other vehicles, not being bothered by the shower of bullets the soldiers are shooting at it and killing them all by breathing fire on them or even eating them. Artemis, who's managed to survive the crash, sees all this and comes up with a plan. After grabbing two flares from the wrecked plane, she runs towards Rathalos and shoots her hook at its wing, stabbing it with his knife when she is dragged closer. This enrages the beast, which is about to breathe fire on her for what she did. Artemis uses this chance to light the flare on fire, burning her hand on the process, and tosses it into Rathalos open mouth, burning it from the inside. Sadly, this is still not enough damage to kill the monster. It raises again, ready to attack Artemis, but it's interrupted by Hunter, who starts shooting some of his explosive arrows. 
One of them manages to get inside Rathalos through a wound left by the flare, and this is the final hit needed to kill the beast at last. The Admiral arrives after that, telling her they came because they couldn't let the monsters destroy her world. The Sky Tower has opened another portal, and there is a creature called Gore Magala on top of it, so Artemis decides to go back to the other world with them to destroy the tower and end this cycle once and for all. She, Hunter, and the Admiral go after the new monster, pushing it back into its world as the Chef Palico joins the fight. Unknown to them, a mysterious cloaked figure observes the battle from the top of the tower. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.